What's up, chat? How y'all doing? Check in, check in, everybody. Uh, Lunch time now. I had to do a time check so I can address you guys properly. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, On this Wednesday, first and foremost, I want to thank you guys, as always, for your continued support. Um, If you don't know already, we have sold out our first event. Uh, I will get with Mike this week, and we may talk about the second event. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you do not follow the Hustle Time podcast on Instagram, um, that is the podcast channel associated with my actual podcast. I will be doing new episodes. The reason why I'm sharing that Instagram with you guys is one, to give people time to check into this live stream, obviously. And two, um, I do go live on the Hustle Time podcast Instagram page. And if you guys want to comment, call in, do anything and be a part of the podcast, uh, not the YouTube channel, but my podcast, um, that is how you can type in your questions. You can join the Instagram live chat and you can be a part of the discussion. Um, if you ever just want to be on an episode of the Hustle Time podcast, that is available wherever you like to listen to podcasts to include your Alexa, um, Google Play, uh, Stitcher app, uh, everywhere, really. Like, I can't even think of all the places, but wherever you like to listen to podcasts, um, you can check out the Hustle Time podcast. And I will be doing a podcast immediately after um, this live stream as well. So um, if you guys want to be a part of my next podcast, uh, if you have trouble finding it, it's just the Hustle Time Podcast on Instagram. Or if you follow JT Hustles, it is the only uh, Instagram page that I'm following on Instagram. And that is by design to make it easier for people to find the podcast for those of you um, who ask about the podcast. And I bring that up because I've been getting a lot of recent questions about, excuse me, about the podcast, Um, like any tip I have, if anybody wants to be on it, anything like that. So I wanted to make that announcement, give people a time to check in. Uh, and now I want to give you guys a little bit of context of what we're about to be talking about in this live stream, hopefully very briefly, then I'm going to let you guys go. Um, got a great turnout on yesterday's live stream when I was downstairs with my brother, broke down the pallet, went through everything and um, was just answering you guys' questions. But since then, I've been getting a lot of questions about just selling. So um, as you may or may not know, if you're new to this channel, I am a full-time entrepreneur. So um, I I don't have a part-time or full-time job. Uh, Entrepreneurship is the only way that I I make money doing different um, businesses, aka hustles, as I call them. So um, selling is like a a very important part of my life. Like, um, So I think it is a legitimate question to ask. Um, I've been an entrepreneur for four years. Um, and I just want to address uh, new sellers or people that want to get into selling. So um, the the first concern that I've been seeing a lot lately, especially after that video, is um, people want to get into selling stuff, uh, but they're worried about rejection. And I want you to understand that in sales is always going to be a numbers game. So um, it's not anything personal. Uh, if you try to sell somebody your product or service, you have to understand that even the best sales companies out there, sales people out there, they get rejected. It's always a numbers game. So just because, <clears throat> so just because you ask your family members and friends, will they buy your such and such? And most of them says no. You got to understand that you probably have to do um, a huge number of people. You got to pull a bunch of people. I'll give you a perfect example. Um, as of this live stream, this YouTube channel. <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't know what's wrong with my voice. It is kind of raining outside, but I'm gonna get it together. But um, as of this live stream, there's over 33,000 subscribers to this YouTube channel. Uh, we recently dropped an event and we had uh only 20 people, uh, and it was a short amount of time, but uh we had 20 people uh out of 33,000 show interest in the event and then go ahead and uh register for the event and we sold it out. Um so just understand that, you know, and one video that we did uh, to promote the event has over 40,000 views. Now, uh, I just want you to understand that that happens to everybody. So somebody that has an audience of 30,000 plus uh, that does a promotional video with all the videos me and Mike has together, probably over 60,000 views. And that was only to feel like a 10 seat 
in-person event. Now, there has been since then more people that want to come out. Uh, it, it was kind of short notice. So, you know, there are some factors that contributed into that in all honesty. But just to give you an idea of the amount of volume um, that we had compared to the amount of responses we had uh, and went ahead and, and sold it out. So you looking at 33,000, but you know, we only got 20 people that showed interest and then 10 people. Uh, so half of that to actually go ahead and uh, sell out the first event. So when you start selling stuff and you get told no by 12 people, you got to understand like it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. And everybody gets rejected. Uh, it's people that reject Walmart. It's people like, I don't want to shop at Walmart. I don't like Walmart. I'm going to go to Target. And, you know, and there's people that I don't want to shop at or well, I don't want to eat at this restaurant. I'm going to go here. So it's companies that's way bigger than you that get rejected every single day. Just keep doing your best, learning uh, the game, uh, pro perfecting your product or service. If it's your own, if you're going to sell somebody else's product or service, there's nothing wrong with that. But just protect of uh, perfecting your selling skills and you will get better. So don't take it personal. This person says no. Okay, move on. Ask somebody else. You might have to get 99 no's before you get a first yes. Like it just depends on what you're selling. How good are you at selling? And that's just the reality of the game. So I just want you to understand that don't be afraid of rejection and feel like nobody wants to buy something from you. Every business has that same exact problem. Okay. Every business has that same exact problem with there is no 100% conversion rate. Walmart looks like it sells way more than you and I, but Walmart does millions of dollars of marketing and they have stores everywhere. So, you know, if you if we could see behind the scenes, uh, comparably, they get rejected way more than us. But Walmart is pretty much everywhere and they make a lot of money as well. So um, I wanted to start off with that because that was the biggest question that I was seeing recently was I want to get into sales, but um, I, I don't really know how to sell and I'm afraid of rejection, which is a legit concern if you never sold anything before. Um, if you're going to get into the reselling game, uh, like what I am in as well, and that's why I got the palette of stuff. Um, I like eBay and Macari and Amazon, even though I don't sell a lot on Amazon, I still think it's a great platform for many sellers is because they already have like the network. Okay. So, um, for example, let's say, uh, I'll just use myself as an example. Let's say JTS was a brand new seller, um, learning how to sell, don't know anything about marketing, shipping, nothing. Um, if I come out with jthustles.com and none of you guys knew me, uh, it's going to be pretty hard for me to try to get some sales early on. I got to do a lot of marketing, got to make a name for myself. When you brand new, there are going to be some people that's going to be like, is it a scam? Uh, I never heard of this before. They never sold anything before. So it's going to be a learning curve. And um, I will say that if you sell it through eBay, Amazon, Macari, things like that, there are consumers that either consciously or unconsciously don't even think that that's coming for, from you. OK, so, yeah, it's still JT Hustles selling through eBay or selling through Amazon if I put it through Amazon. But it's people are comfortable with eBay. People are comfortable uh, with Amazon and rightfully so. They built a name for themselves. They have infrastructure to protect the customers and they're a proven name in the online marketplace. So I would say that if you want to get into selling on a small scale, then reselling is not bad for that reason. And um, if for the sake of anybody that's new. Uh, when I told somebody how to promote their private label business through uh, eBay and Amazon, uh, let me find, let's just use my book, for example. Let's say you sold a book, any book, um, through eBay, Amazon, Macari, wherever. And then in the envelope, you include a thank you letter saying, uh, thank you for purchasing from jthustles.com. Save 15% on your next order uh, on jthustles.com by using coupon code Go hustle. So something like that. Right. So, you, yeah, they bought it through Amazon and Macari, but they got a thank you letter in their envelope that you put in there. And now you're saying, OK, if you like this product next time you want to buy something similar to this, another book or whatever. If you go through my website, you'll save more money than if you go back through Amazon and Macari. And again, that won't be a 100 percent conversion rate on that either. But that is one way that I've had success. 
uh, trying to drive people to my private label website, especially when I was brand new and I was having trouble trying to learn about uh, Facebook ads and Google AdWords and Instagram marketing and all that other stuff. Because if you're brand new, all of that stuff can be overwhelming. So that's just a little easy tip for anybody out there that wants to try that. Uh, another thing is, is people say, I, I don't know how to start. I will tell you that um, if you're somebody that don't know how to start, you're at the right channel. I have a, a variety of entrepreneurial content to include uh, just information on buying and reselling stuff. All right. So um, as you guys know, I like to go to thrift stores, go get pallets, resell stuff like that. Um, I do have my own private label uh, business. I don't talk a lot about it on this channel because it is a B2B business, meaning uh, uh, not trying to insult anybody's intelligence. But if you don't know what a B2B business is, it means that it's a business that only sells to businesses. So I don't sell direct to consumer. I sell in bulk to other businesses and it's a very small niche. So it has nothing to do with being a courier or pretty much anything else that I talk about on this channel. So um, I tell people about starting a private label business, but I just don't go in very depth with that because it's completely irrelevant to, to the goal here of trying to teach people about entrepreneurship. Um, outside of that, you guys know, um, I guess in a sense, you could say writing your own book is your own private label business. You know, you put your name on it and you market it and you sell it. Um, and that's something that most people on this channel know that I have as well. So uh, if you guys want to count that, I got two private label businesses, uh, the book and the private label B2B business as well. So um, if you don't know how to start, subscribe to this channel, check out other content. I can link some other stuff in the description below if need be. Um, also, uh, appreciate all 39 of y'all here. Hit that like button. Uh, 40 people now. Thank you. Uh, hit that like button. Tell me where you're watching this from. Any questions that you have, put them in the chat. And at the end, I will address them. Uh, and I do it like that in all of my live streams because I might cover uh, your question as I go through my spiel. Um, but if not, put it in the chat. I will get to it. So, um, and also uh, going on, one more thing I want to emphasize on on uh, not knowing how to start. Um, I did a recent video uh, talking about the best business to start is to take one of your hobbies and make them into a business. Not saying that your hobby, because I don't know what your interests are, will make you six figures, seven figures or beyond. Um, but it's something that you like to do. It's something that you probably will do consistently, whether or not you're making a lot of money or not, because it's something that you're already doing. And you'll learn the fundamental of the fundamentals of business, like paying taxes, marketing, getting a business bank account, EIN, LLC, all of these fundamental things that it doesn't matter if you're selling books, T-shirts, uh, cell phone cases or real estate. Like, you know, you're going to need to know how do you market? How do you structure your business? You know, simple things like that that are, I call it universal to business in general, regardless of what business you're doing. So I, it's better for you to learn on a small scale like that. And then if you want to scale up and say, OK, uh, my hobby is cool, but it, there's not a lot of money in it. I want to do something bigger. OK, at least now you have some knowledge that you can transfer over into whatever it is that uh, you enjoy doing. Um. This might kind of tie into it, but I'm getting so many different questions about it. I'm going to make it its own thing and address it. It's um, people say, I don't know what to sell. I don't know what to sell. Now, if you don't know what to sell, then my question uh, after I ask you what your interests are, because believe it or not, there are some people that say that I don't really know what I'm interested in. You know, I'm, uh, you know, in my 30s, 40s, 20s, it don't matter what age you are, but it's like, you know. I'm, I just work a job, take care of my family and just do what I got to do. Like they're not even in the mentality of doing what I like to do or what is it that I like to do uh, is I'm doing what I have to do to take care of me and my family. And I respect that. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so for those of you who maybe honestly just don't know what your interests are because you just focused on, you know, taking care of business or um, you still finding out what your interests are, I will say, well, why do you want to sell stuff? Do you want to sell stuff for money, which may seem like the obvious reason. And most people will say, yeah, I want to sell it for money. Or do you want to sell it for brand? Believe it or not, I know a lot of people. I'll give you a perfect example. Um, I'm, I'm dabbling in art. I have good friends that can draw their butt off. Like they could draw a picture of you and it looks like it'll jump off the page. So um, they really love their art and they're trying to sell their art 
not necessarily for the money. They have full time jobs and good jobs that they're doing fine with. But it's just more of like a brand thing. Like it's one thing to say I can draw really good. It's another thing that you can sell your your um, drawings. And eventually they want to be in some sort of museum or be on display somewhere. So if you're selling stuff for brand and uh, not even just those people that are in the arts can do that, maybe early on in your business, what I did early on in my private label business is that I sold stuff just for brand. So meaning I sold stuff, not trying to make the most money. So everything was at a steep discount, but I was giving stuff to consumers just so that they can verify the quality, share it with their friends and other business people and giving the deep discounted prices to businesses that gave me my first shot just so I can build that brand. And I did that for a while and got to a point. So now it's like, okay, uh, uh, some people in my niche, they know my quality. Uh, they know, you know, my turnaround time and I have a bit of a name for my business. And um, now I have a brand. Now I switch over and to say, OK, uh, now that I have a brand, now let's monetize it a little bit more. So instead of everything being steeply discounted, now we're in it for the money. So believe it or not, there are a lot of people who, at least in the beginning and sometimes always, they don't sell stuff uh, to get rich. They sell stuff to like fund their hobby which is probably what I'll do with my fish breeding business in the early stages. It'll probably, I'll probably just reinvest whatever the amount of money it is back into that, buy more tanks, more fish, keep it going. And then there may be a time where I turn the corner or I flip the switch and say, okay, um, I'm, I'm at a point now where this is my hobby, but I can also make a lot of money on this. So now let's worry about making money over brand because the brand is already established. And now we just got to maintain it, if that makes sense. Um, so if you don't know what to sell, in a nutshell, my question to you is, why do you want to sell stuff? Now, um, and let's say you answer the question and say, I want to sell it uh, stuff to be brand. Well, I'm going to tell you to sell what you want to sell, because now you're trying to build your own personal brand and you're not necessarily trying to appeal to the maximum number of consumers. For example, uh, I see a lot of people that want to start selling uh, T-shirts, but um, they have their own custom logo, their own custom sayings, you know, things of that nature. And um, and it may not be the, the popular thing of, of the now, if that makes sense. So I will say, just sell what you want to sell because you're trying to build a name for that logo, for that slogan, for that brand. Understand that if you're selling for brand, you're not going to make top dollar because you're building the brand. So your T-shirt line is not going to do the same as Supreme's T-shirt line, as Bape's T-shirts, as Nike T-shirts, Polo T-shirts, you know, the popular T-shirts that you know. Now, can you grind it out and get to that level? Absolutely. Just got to put your hustle in. But in the beginning, be realistic. If you're selling for brand, you're not going to make top dollar because you're building your brand. So in the beginning, it's new. People, for the most part, uh, are, you know, slow to change. So if you got some weird, funky logo or some weird saying that it has a deeper meaning, but on the surface, it's kind of hard to understand. You're not going to make as many sales as uh, Jordan or Nike. Just do it. You know, you know what I mean? Something like that. So um, that's what I would tell somebody if you're selling for brand. Sell what you want to sell. Make the best product or service and sell what you want to sell to build your brand. Now, if you say I'm selling to make money, which is what most people will say, I will tell you that you should sell what your audience wants, which may sound a little confusing, but let's use the t-shirt example again, because I feel like everybody here can understand the whole concept of selling t-shirts. It's a simple business. Anybody can start. Now, if you wanted to sell a t-shirt, if your slogan was, again, something that on the surface may be confusing, but has some deep, profound meaning, maybe uh, if I'm selling for money, I'm going to put whatever the popular saying of the day is on the shirt. Like if you guys ever went to like uh, Myrtle Beach Bike Week Festival or any kind of festival and they just had a, a pretty transparent saying, you know what it means. Um, like when Drake dropped the hit song and then they came out with all of those shirts talking about hotline bling. And it was a, you know, a basic saying, but it's people that I know that uh, were down in Myrtle Beach. They made a killing off of those, just putting the common sayings on there. Like, uh, and even when uh, they had the little Kiki song, 
you know, there was people making shirts about that. So again, the whole point of the matter is, is that you, if you're selling to make money, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. People got to eat. You need to identify your niche, find out what the interests are of the people in that niche, and then sell them what they want. Don't sell them what you want them to have because you don't have a brand behind that. And while you might make some sales, you're not going to make the most money. So if you're just saying like, man, I'm in a bad spot right now. I hate my job. I just want to sell something and make money. Then probably if you're not a very creative person and can identify a niche and figure out what they want and market them your own product or service to address that, uh, that they're interested in, then being a reseller may be for you because you can go find something that's already popular at a discounted price, buy it in bulk or on sale or whatever the case may be, and open up an eBay store, Amazon store, Macari store, whatever it is you want to do and start reselling stuff and start making money because now you're not selling them the JT Hustles brand. You're selling them a Samsung wireless charger or some Nike shoes or you know what I'm saying? A already established brand that meets the needs of that niche. Um, another big thing, and I'm about to get to all of your questions, you guys, but, um, you know, I like to be pretty thorough with this so people can kind of understand um, <clears throat> what I'm talking about in all of my videos. Hit that like button if you haven't done so already. If you have any questions about anything, put it in the chat. want to know where you're watching this from. Um, something that it took me a, a little while to learn which um, may be obvious to you, but for the benefit of the people that's out there, I want you to understand selling value. If you're new to sales, um, maybe you've heard somebody talk about value or you got to sell the value, but um, maybe I can give you an example that makes a, a little bit more sense. So <clears throat> this YouTube channel, um, I'm a, obviously an African-American male. You can be a, a racist and not like African-American men. Uh, you cannot like what I look like, not like what I sound like, but maybe you want to start a courier service or maybe you want to sell stuff online or maybe you want to do whatever it is that I put in a video or I have somebody on the channel that teaches you how to do to make money. So you might watch these videos and I'm giving you an example without calling any names because it's all good. It's part of, part of life. Um, so there are people who will watch the videos and say, hey, you're, you're black, ugly, stupid, N-word. And then I will see them again in live streams and in comment sections. And now they're positive. Like, hey, thanks for the advice. You know, so, and, and the whole point of this example is to tell you that using my YouTube channel to show you an example of selling value. You don't have to like me personally to watch a free YouTube video take the information and then go make money off of it. You can watch the video, say, hey, you're stupid, black, ugly, whatever, whatever, and then go make money. And now you're happy. And guess what? YouTube will run ads on my video and I will get paid as well. So it is the equivalent of if you saw me in the street and say, hey, you stupid, ugly, dumb, whatever, and then gave me a dollar and then ran away. And then those people that troll consistently, like, if somebody was to just jump in the chat now and just put line after line, then that increases my watch time. And the more your watch time increases, uh, and just for, you know, the people that care how YouTube works, and I'll give you other examples in a second. If you continuously troll throughout the entire video, well, now YouTube does not know that you're a troll. It just knows that you watch this video for this amount of time. So it assumes that you're interested in this video. So it recommends other videos that I make to you and to people that have similar watch patterns as you, aka your friends. So if you and your friends like similar stuff, watch similar YouTube videos, now that real world example will be like, hey, you stupid, whatever, whatever. Here's a dollar. Let me go tell my friends about you so they can come do this. And then they give you money as well. And when I say selling value, that is an easy example that I know everybody here can understand. So on YouTube, I'm not selling you, hey, come like me as a man, as whatever. You know, I do appreciate and I get a lot of love from a lot of people. But the value of this YouTube channel, I don't have to be, you know, your favorite person. You can learn the game, go make money. You benefit from it. I benefit from it. 
it doesn't hurt either one of us. Like, I don't care what the comment section says when it comes to negativity. That's just a part of life. Another example, when it comes to the books that I'm writing, you guys know I've been using this as an example, so we'll keep it going. That same person, like, you can hate me as a person. If you don't want to watch 400 videos to learn about entrepreneurship, you can go buy a book, learn the game, start your courier company, scale it out, make a ton of money. You can pee on the book and set it on fire. It don't hurt me. It don't hurt you. You got your business. I sold the book. So uh, when, when you're brand new and somebody is telling you to sell value, you got to understand that because I feel like a lot of people are like, I'm an introvert. I'm a shy person. I don't know what to say to get people to like me. And you can learn all of that stuff. The more experience you have, you'll get better at it. But when somebody says sell value, it's like whatever your product or service is, if you do, if you are in the business the right way, you identify the niche and you're marketing the people within your niche. So uh, what you're selling is not for the whole world. A lot of people want to start a business and say, what I'm selling is for the whole world. Everybody can use it, which may be true, but everybody may not want it. You get what I'm saying? Like the whole world can use clean water, but I know people that don't like to drink water. You know, people like to bathe, but I'm just saying, you could say, I'm going to make the best water ever for you to drink and you'll live longer. Your skin will look better, all of that stuff. But there are people that's like, I don't like to drink water. So don't get stuck on, I have a product that can help everybody. I'm a market to everybody. Everybody's going to buy it because that's not the case. No matter how good your product or service is, people can use it. It could benefit them, but they're still not going to buy it. Also, um, a couple more examples. We'll move on um, when it comes to selling value reselling on eBay. Like my eBay store is not called JT Hustles. Somebody can buy something from me that they need. Like uh, if you want a drone, I think I got some drones. Uh, well, I know I got some drones, got a bunch of cell phone stuff and I'm selling it below retail. So again, using that same example, you can hate African-American men, but if you want a discounted good charger, you'll go on eBay and buy it because that's the value that you want. So when you are thinking about selling value, uh, don't get so stuck on, um, I'm brand new to selling. Nobody's going to like me personally. I don't know how to make people like me or make people buy from me. If you have a good product or service, let that sell it. So I will say in the beginning, I will say identify a good product or service. And then, identify. well, first you got to identify a niche. Identify your niche, then identify a good product or service for that niche, and then let that product or service sell to the people for you. Same thing with the tea. Um, the tea was like a substitute, which honestly didn't do that well. I don't mind sharing uh, that with people. I still enjoy it, like uh, the Hustle Time tea, but um, got a few sales, nothing crazy uh, to go all in and say we're going to start bottling tea. But um, I'm sharing that with you guys to let you know that that's another value exchange. I know a lot of truck drivers that's been truck drivers for a long time. They mentored me way before started making these YouTube videos. And they was telling me, you know, the horror stories of people taking these energy drinks and uh, drinking all these sodas. And in extreme cases, they was snorting coke to stay up just so they can drive longer before all of these regulations. Now there's a set amount of time you can drive and all of that. But it was all of this stuff that people were doing and people are still doing some of this stuff now so that they can make money. And since I, I have a certain love for people in the transportation industry from doing that for so many years, I said, what, what is an all natural way that I can try to help those people? Because not only are the health benefits terrible, you can also lose your occupation in the short term. If you fail your DOT physical for whatever reason, because you messed your body up so you can stay up to, you know, uh, drive all these, these long hours. So it's, you know what I mean? Kind of like how the old saying was like, you know, you you cut your nose off to spite your face, uh, for example. Like, yo, you did all this stuff to drive, but then in the long term, it messed your body up. So now you can't drive. So um, but again, selling value is very important. Appreciate all 54 people that's here. Hit that thumbs up button. Tell me where you're watching this from. Any questions at all, put them in the chat. For the benefit of those of you that are just tuning in, I want you to know uh, the whole concept of this is um, appreciate all the love you guys have been giving me. I've been having a lot of people reach out to me recently saying um, I want to get into selling, but they had some reservations. So I just wanted to kind of address those concerns. Um, 
And another thing, too, that uh, somebody may be able to relate to, because a lot of people that I know personally had this issue, too. Um, I was raised in the southeast. Fortunately enough, uh, I moved to Maryland for a while, loved it. Uh, but um, and I also lived overseas for a couple of years while I was in the military. So I was able to see a lot. So I was in the south. I was in, I consider Maryland the North, even though some people don't consider it the North, um, but I was in the North. I was overseas in Japan. So I got to see that just because where you were born and raised and what you were taught by people that care about you, that's not necessarily true or necessarily the only way. And I say that because where I was raised in the South, uh, commission-based jobs were thought to be terrible. Uh, everybody will say, don't work no job that pay you commission. You want to get an hourly pay so that you guaranteed that you're going to make at least 10, 12, 20, $30 an hour, whatever the best is that you can get. Um, you want to tell that person that you're able to work anytime because you really want to get that job and keep that job. And even better than getting paid hourly, you want to get paid salary. So you rather have $40,000 a year salary because that way you kind of guarantee you're going to get that much money. You ain't got to worry about putting in 40 hours a week. Um, and then it took me going to other places and realizing stuff and getting salary jobs and saying, OK, sometimes you'll get a salary job and work way more hours than somebody that was getting paid by the hour, because now you are a greater asset to the company. We can work JT Hustles for 50, 60 hours a week and only give him this. Whereas if we work uh, somebody over here that we got to pay by the hour. We got to pay them even more money because we're going to give them time and a half after this. And, you know, they get an hourly rate. So uh, all of that to say is that that had me really discouraging entrepreneurship for a point in my life because I'm thinking like I don't want a commission based job. I only get paid if I sell somebody something. What if nobody buys nothing? I only get paid if I can prove the value to somebody. Um, what if I'm not good at that, especially in the beginning? And um, it took me from going up north, going overseas, and now having a more well-rounded view of how life is, is that ultimately, this is where you want to be. You know, and you don't have to be fully here. I'm not telling anybody to quit their job and say I'm going all in on entrepreneurship. It's not for everybody. But once you look at the value, um, it's, it's better here. There's the, Me and Mike did a live chat, and he showed somebody... Um, a job that you can do in 30 minutes or less, and it pays you $100. And uh, there was a gentleman that thought it was a scam that called in and everything because he was like, you know, it's only 15 minutes of work, 30 minutes of work. You're making $100. And then um, what you have to understand is that maybe you come from an environment where it's not good to make a lot of money in a little bit of a time. It, it doesn't seem right. It's not logical. That's not how the real world works. But if you understand the value, um, I think that particular business was dryer vent um, cleaning service. In, a, in extreme cases, worst case scenario, people's houses have burned down because of that. There is records that you can verify with your fire department and other places. So uh, once you go in and you're saying I'm an entrepreneurship, I get paid based off of the value. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to provide the value. Your rate is based off of your value. So uh, whereas if you work in for ten dollars an hour and you got to work 10 hours to make one hundred dollars, Mike can go in and in 30 minutes make what it took you to make uh, to make in 10 hours. Now, it's not that it's unfair, but what is the value? Let's say, for example, you're making ten dollars an hour at a grocery store. There's nothing wrong with a grocery store, but that's just where I know somebody is working, making ten dollars an hour. Um, your value is whatever it is, stocking shelves, bringing carts in, helping people with their car, working the cash register. That is your value. It is important. Everybody appreciates you for that. But compared to Mike's value in that example, his value is I'm preventing your house from burning down. So would you? Rather have somebody prevent your house from burning down or bag your groceries. So you got to understand that once you get to this side, I'm not trying to sell you on the amount of hours I can take away from you. I'm not trying to sell you on a, a salary or anything like that. I'm only concerned with selling you value. Like if you don't see the value, then I have failed as an entrepreneurship. I need to learn how to create a better value. And then I will come back to you with a different product or service and then sell you on that value.
And I, I share that long winded story with you guys because maybe somebody out there, it was raised like how I was raised where, no, you don't want to be paid on commission. You don't, you want to get a salary job ideally, but at the bare minimum, you want to make sure you get in so many dollars an hour. And then if you have to go over them hours, you get in time and a half. But once you compare it to the value, you know what I mean? And I'll be fully transparent with you people uh, right now. I have no problem uh, with it. Um, my consults was uh, $60 for like 30 minutes. Now it's $200 for 30 minutes. And it's not anything that I'm ashamed of. Like, I'm not charging you for my time. I'm charging you for my expertise. I have helped people make thousands of dollars, six figures with an independent courier service. If you do not want to spend $200 or you do not have $200, that is not a knock on you. But I'm also not going to discount my value for, you know, for, for that. I have plenty of free content. I have a cheap book. So if you want to watch the videos, if you want to buy the book, you want to do it that way, that's fine. But if you want to talk to me personally, I have several businesses to run. I have to take care of my daughter, take care of myself. I have other people that depend on me in businesses. So I, because of supply and demand, I'm sure everybody's heard of that. Because of supply and demand, now that is what I have to charge. I made the announcement that um, in the future, well, once I have more time, uh, if business slows down, I don't mind helping people. That's why I keep going live, answering your questions, doing all these free uh, YouTube videos, over 400 of them to date, because I don't mind helping people. But once we start talking about doing consults, now you're taking away time that I could be listing stuff online. I could be researching new businesses. I can be on the phone trying to get more B2B customers for my private label business. I can be spending that time with my daughter. So you got to understand that that is selling value, supply and demand. And in my opinion, this is where you want to be. So, okay, hit that like button if you haven't already. Time for the shout outs. Shout out to Lewis. What's up? Lance, good afternoon, brother. Marcus Muhammad Ali, what's up? What's up? What's up? Michael Brown, 100. King Steve, good morning. Good morning, sir. Mike Jones, greeting and congratulations. Appreciate you. Olivia Dixon, hello, sir. Hello, Olivia. Michael Brown, following you on Instagram. Appreciate you following me on Instagram. If you missed the beginning of this live stream, I said immediately after this live stream, I'm going to be on the Hustle Time Podcast Instagram. If you have trouble finding it, if you follow me, JT Hustles on Instagram, it is the only profile that I'm following, and that is by design. So if you want to find the podcast, it's easy for you to find. So go to JT Hustles, spelled exactly the same way it's spelled on this YouTube channel. And then I'm following one person, well, one thing, and it's the Hustle Time Podcast, which is my podcast. And I'm going to do a podcast immediately after this. And if you want to call in or type in your thoughts, and be on the podcast, you're welcome to do so. Appreciate everybody that's already tuning into the podcast. Got over 1,300 people listening to it on a monthly basis. I really appreciate y'all. Um, and the podcast is more so uh, for people that are busy. If you want to listen to this information on the fly, while you're working, while you're riding, whatever the case may be, uh, yeah, you could play a YouTube video, but I know sometimes uh, it's, it's easier if you just had the audio version. Um, so that's why I started the podcast, and I enjoy it. Um, I don't do any computer stuff. Facebook, Twitter, etc. I only look at YouTube. Cool, cool, man. And that's the way the world the world is going. Uh, so that's legit. What's up from West Virginia? Shout out West Virginia. I had a courier route years ago in West Virginia, man. It was so many hills, well, mountains. Man, shout out West Virginia. Beautiful state, though. Ton of mountains. Carol Sims, good afternoon. Mike Jones. My stand was at Penn North. My store was on North and Charles. Um, I like to schedule a call to speak about the independent courier service industry. No problem. If you want to do a consult, link is in the, uh, the description below. Um, also, um, you guys, like I mentioned um, before, you know um, what the price is, but I will be doing sales on it uh, whenever business slows down. I have no idea when business is going to slow down. If you guys want to consult today, we could do we could still do a consult sooner. But I'm just just letting you guys know, trying to be transparent with you guys, give you as much game as possible. Mike Jones, never been intimidated by the marketplace. Absolutely. If you want to be an entrepreneur, I don't care if it's part time or full time. You got to understand that uh, you're marketing the humans. And that's going to be a big part of my new book. I'm sharing a little insight with you guys. A lot of people don't market 
like they marketing to humans. I'll give you an example. If you're trying to sell me a product like uh, this Supreme Fanny Pack, if you post one picture of it and you say excellent condition, fast shipper, nobody's going to buy it from you. I mean, for the most part, you're going to get no sales because it's one picture. You don't give us a good description about it. And you wouldn't buy that either for or most consumers wouldn't either. So understand where you're marketing stuff. Don't be lazy and post one picture, say good condition, red, fast shipper. Like, tell me about the thing. You want me to buy it without physically coming to see it and touch it. At least describe it for me. So marketing to humans. That's going to be more in-depth uh, when I come out with the book. Again, um, I'm, I am working on my second book. They help felons become entrepreneurs. Anybody can read the book and become an entrepreneur. I got that question a lot, too. But it's going to be written from the perspective of you have a felony and things that you can do, even though, you know, you paid your debt to society, but maybe life is still trying to hold you back. So it's written from that perspective. So understand that uh, if you buy it and read it. Um, but anybody can read it and benefit. Can Postmates put you on at their building if you have a lead with them or is it all done above their head? Uh, I'll probably, well, if you're going to the corporate office, maybe like if you're going, if you're saying like, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm assuming that, yeah, if you go to the corporate office, like, I don't, I don't think there'll be any issue, you know what I mean? Uh, but honestly, I don't know, like, you know what I mean? I, I haven't, I'm not super familiar with post, oh, you said postmasters, my bad, I'm, I'm not reading, uh, just teach, can postmasters put you on at their building if you have a lead with them or is it all done above their head? Um, like I'm, I'm speculating now, like I've never had a lead for the United States postal service, uh, but I am assuming that they can help you. I would start with them. So, um, if you have a lead for them, I would talk to them. And then if they say it's above their head, then they can route you up the chain. And if it's a legitimate lead and it's going to help them, then, you know, I don't see why they wouldn't. But um, again, all of that is just speculation. I, I'm not sure what you mean by you have a lead. I'm sure you're saying, uh, generally speaking, I'm not sure you're saying, but generally speaking, I'm assuming that you're saying that you know somebody that wants to start sending packages through the United States Postal Service. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. You can clear it up. I'm not going to try to twist up your words. Um, and watching from Boston, shout out to Boston, making Georgia in the building. Kinston, North Carolina, rolling with you. Appreciate that. Watching from Baltimore. Shout out Baltimore. Man, man, I can't wait to go back to Baltimore, man. I used to go to a place called Lexington Market. It used to be kind of like the hood, but um, had some good food there. Might not be the hood no more. It used to be the hood. Are you in Georgia? Nope. I'm in North Carolina. I will be coming to Georgia. Don't ask me when because I, I don't have an exact date, but I will be going to Atlanta, Georgia for sure. Um. Probably Savannah, but 100% sure I will be going to Atlanta at some point once I can work things out uh, to to chop it up with some entrepreneurs down there, kick it with whoever want to kick it. Mr. Q Mason, Waterbury, Connecticut. God bless bro John Kennedy. Appreciate that. James Graham, Great Falls, South Carolina. Shout out South Carolina. Uh, I'm always in South Carolina. My daughter is in South Carolina when she's not with me in North Carolina, so I'm always I'm all around the Carolinas. I just tell people I'm from the Carolinas. I'm everywhere. How is Macardo? Because the review said they are horrible. Um, like, man, I've had no trouble. Let me see. With Macardo. Let me try and pull it up. Bear with me. And I know since the lights are on, you guys are probably not going to be able to see nothing. But, uh, And again, like I haven't had any trouble with like the app itself. Now, maybe the reviews are talking about the sellers and stuff, and maybe the payout is structured differently, where it's like eBay, it immediately um hits your pocket. You guys aren't gonna be able to see that, are you? Maybe if I turn it that way. I'm trying to show you guys the sales. But anyway, um the to answer to your question, to me personally, Macari has not been um has not been bad. Um, maybe they're talking about the sellers and you don't get your money immediately. Like if you buy something from my eBay store, money hits my pocket immediately because I have the PayPal debit card. Um, if you uh, buy something from me from Macari, 
I'll get the money you spend with me this week. I don't get till next week. Um, I can release it around Saturday. I wait and I release all the money that I made. I'll get it like Wednesday of next week. So, um, yeah, it is a little bit different in that aspect of it. So, um, but me personally, uh, I haven't had any complaints about Macari. Uh, I think it can be better. Like, um, you can't update the quantity. So for example, if I'm trying to sell you 20, uh, Supreme fanny packs, um, I either have to make 20 listings of the exact same thing, which is stupid, or I can make one when it sells, copy and paste it and make another one, um, which is still stupid. Uh, so hopefully they'll make that update so I can make one listing, have a quantity of 20. So once one sells, the listing is still up and I can sell through all of them. So I think that it's still, you know, it can be improved, but uh, I don't think it's horrible. Um, I, I made a little money with it. Do you have anything that teaches affiliate marketing or creating a, a niche site that make money? Um, well, that, that's what I'm addressing in the book. Um, I don't I, I mention it a lot in uh, videos, but um, I don't think like I, I have a dedicated video about um, affiliate marketing or creating niche uh, niche specific stuff. Um, but yeah, definitely like all of that is going to be addressed in the book, though. And I'll. Um, I'll emphasize it for you because good thing you're you're writing this comment before the book is completely finished. So we will make sure that it is emphasized for you. Shout out Lance. So um, it was going to be mentioned, but I'll, I'll go in, in depth about it. Uh, if it helps anybody, California in the mountain, shout out Michael Brown. Yes, I do photography club chooses the lighthouse. Shout out to anybody that does photography. Photography is, is hard. Um, I thought it was as easy as getting a camera and taking a picture, but then the editing and the settings, shout out to you, Mike Jones. Um, it, it's the equivalent of like, uh, some people think that doing YouTube is easy as just, um, pressing record and making videos. And it could get to that point after a while, but in the beginning, ask any new YouTuber, you know what I mean? It's a learning curve. Club chooses the lighthouse, Odell's, etc. I like staying paid. Shout out. Reachability, drive to learn, and action are important. Self motivated, I always learn working for me. I moved from Baltimore because the police robbed me over and over again in the 90s. Man, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. Um, shout out all 68 people that's here in the chat. Hit that thumbs up button. If you just tuned in, you're still right on time. We're talking about sales, marketing, whatever it is you want to talk about, put it in the chat. And uh, I'm trying to get the, as many questions as possible. Hopefully, I get to everybody's. Word of mouth is the best advertisement. Yeah. That is good. But in the beginning, uh, coming from the perspective of somebody that's brand new, like um, in the beginning, word of mouth is not easy to do. Um, but you're true. Like once you build a name for yourself, work on your brand, then that word of mouth will start spreading. But word of mouth goes both ways. If you start selling trash products, then word of mouth will say, don't buy anything from JT Hustles because I bought a T-shirt. And as soon as I put it on, it split down the middle and, you know, and, and he wouldn't give me a refund. And it took six months to get to my door. So word of mouth goes both ways, good and bad. But I do agree that it's the uh it's a good form of advertising. And in the beginning it's hard to do because nobody knows who you are for the most part. You probably like how most people do, they tell their family members and friends, which might be like verbally supportive, but um not much more beyond that with spreading the word and buying stuff. But um yeah, good point. Good service is my pet peeve. Good afternoon from Catonsville, Maryland. Shout out to you, Mr. Truth Williams. Cindy Cross Stitch, Tennessee in the building, sharing your knowledge is the greatest gift. Letitia Reed, Atlanta, Georgia. Appreciate everybody in the chat right now. You can make a t-shirt package deal and slide your brand in the package and deal with other shirts. Absolutely. Um, I've done that with t-shirts, with anything, really, anything that you're trying to drive traffic to your private label website. So if if I was selling uh, I'm going to keep using this because it's right here. If I was trying to sell you guys any book, it don't got to be my book. It could be Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It could be The Total Money Makeover. But if I had my own bookstore and I sold this to you on Amazon, eBay, Macari, wherever you bought this book from, I will put a thank you letter um, and then also give you a coupon code saying, next time you want to buy a book like this, go to jtlsus.com, save 10% using code word, go hustle, um, something like that. Then, um, in the early stages, if you don't have any better way to do it, you could do it that way. 
Uh, I will say a better way would be, you know, social media ads as of right now. Um, so word of mouth is good. We touched on that. But social media ads are, are good as well, um, especially in today's marketplace. Nicole Noel, Los Angeles in the building. Good content, bro. Keep it up. Appreciate you. Trolls still trying to figure that one out. It's all good, man. You're going to get trolls on the Internet, in real life. Uh, what's up from Connecticut? Shout out to you. You're never going to have you're never going to make everybody happy. Doesn't matter if you're on the internet, if you're in real life, take it in stride. Um, good thing I like about YouTube trolls is again, like you had to watch the video. You had to, you don't have to watch my whole video to count as a view. And YouTubers get paid based off of the views. And uh, so you know what I mean? It, it's all good. Like there's there's worse ways to insult people than giving them money. What's up, JT? What's up, Diamonds Life? Nina Sky, Trump believes it's best to enforce immigration law. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, man. And then there's a link or something. Yeah, man, I, I don't know what that is, man. St. Louis, Missouri in the building, Phoenix, Arizona, watching from the DMV. DMV got some dope sneaker stores, man, but I don't need no more sneakers, man. But shout out DMV, Captain Daddy, news that you can use, absolutely. We got the UK in the building, man. I love to see people watching my content um, in other countries, man. Uh, th this next book that I'm writing too, like my first book, um, I apologize to any of my international uh, viewers. I didn't know that people from overseas would gravitate to my content, but I've been seeing people from uh, Canada, Romania, the Bahamas, um, the UK now, um, India, and um, I apologize if I'm forgetting any uh, other countries. Um, Africa, uh, people from all over Africa have, have sent me messages and stuff. So, man, my all of my future books and um, will appeal to uh, people all over the, the world, you know, as best I can. You know, as best I can. I'm not going to say I know all of the laws in every country, but I will try to, you know, uh, make it appeal to everybody. And it will be available to everybody worldwide. Um, you know, that want to start making money online or if you got a felony and you want other business ideas, but you don't want to make money online, you want to do something else like um, I got you. I got you. But shout out to the UK Mobo in the building. Is there going to be a second training weekend? Uh, yes, uh, I, I have to get with Mike and we got to work out the logistics of it. Um, and then we'll we'll come to you guys then. But there will be another one. There will be another one. But as of right now, we just sold out the first event. Um, so, yeah, so we uh, are really focusing on that. That's going to be a dope event. We're going to knock it out of the park. Um, it's going to be above expectations. Anybody that's coming is going to be above what you're thinking. Um, so, yeah, we're going to knock that one out of the park. And then we will do a second event and a third and however many events people are interested in coming to. Um, man, I remember when you have 12 subscribers, keep it up at – now at 33,000. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, man. Um, and for anybody that doesn't know all my new subscribers, man, I used to make thank you videos. They still on this channel. Um, for every time I get another thousand subscribers, I was saying thank you for 10 subscribers, 12 subscribers, 50 subscribers. And that just goes back to like gratitude. You know what I mean? So, um, if you want to get into, a uh, personal brand building, which I guess is the term for what this is that we're doing. I'm teaching people entrepreneurship, but there I'm becoming a little bit recognized uh, here and there, depending on where I go. Um, I would say that if you're interested in doing this stuff, man, be show gratitude and not just in personal brand building in your business at uh, at any time. Um, early on um, and still now, if people bought something from my private label business, like uh, I had um, one lady had her own business where she like um she decks out everything no matter what she buys she like I don't want to say bedazzled because that's not a good word for what she does but it don't matter what product she buys she puts her own twist on it and um she bought a lot of stuff from me like three hundred fifty plus um stuff from me and then I sent her some free stuff on top of that so the whole point of the matter is like man gratitude man I appreciate you remembering me um from back then like I think I've been doing this like sixteen months. And I still feel the same way. I'm grateful for every person here. I All 33,000 people and people that's been here from the beginning know I was like, yo, I'm so happy 15 of y'all care about entrepreneurship. I'm so happy 50 of y'all, 1,000 of y'all. And I feel the same way. Um, I'm so happy 33,000 people, 
you know what I mean, are interested and find value in something that I'm saying. Uh, maybe not in every video, but in, you know, a couple videos. I appreciate your time. Your time is your greatest asset. I want you to know I don't take it for granted. That's why I keep on putting out content, trying to help people. Atlanta in the building. Shout out Atlanta. I appreciate you uh, turning me on. The casino is the name. I'm in the dump truck business myself. Yeah, man. They some great YouTubers out here, man. Like, I'm the first person to tell you that um I don't know everything. So, like always, if you're um an entrepreneur, you don't mind sharing game, uh, reach out to me on Instagram, on Facebook. I got a few people already on the list. Um, They don't even know it yet that they already on the list. I'm going to reach out to them, get their schedule, and then they're going to be on the channel as well. Um, But if you're an entrepreneur, you don't mind helping people, I would love to have you on the channel. Um, And uh, and there's other great YouTubers, man, like Casino is the name, man. Great hot shot trucking YouTube channel. But beyond that, he's not just a hot shot trucking guy. He just uh making money guy. He in the real estate. He's an accountant, hot shot trucking. So casino is the name, dope YouTube channel. Um Erica Williams is is a, a, a young lady um that I watch her content. She make great content as well. And the list goes on and on. Andre Hatchet make dope YouTube content. Um my brother, the frugal genius, make great YouTube content. If you ever interested in the uh in the cannabis uh industry engineering cannabis has a youtube channel where he teaches people about how to legally start any kind of cannabis related business and man and i I can't memorize everybody that i had on the channel but everybody that i had on the channel made great content and even the people that haven't made it to the channel yet so i'm going to try to get as many people on everybody on as possible um a young lady um go by the name of kia she has a business called zen home concierge um, and she does great content on Instagram uh, and soon to YouTube as well. If anybody's dealing with depression, anxiety, suicide, I know that's something that, um, <clears throat> especially in our culture, um, we don't like to talk about being depressed, you know, especially as a male. Uh, people tell you to suck it up. But um, but I'm a veteran, Marine Corps veteran. I got friends of mine that, that they seen active combat in Afghanistan and, you know, and they dealing with stuff and you don't got to be. A military veteran to deal with stuff um just regular life you can have ptsd and never left your city like you could have just went through stuff in life and, and just have a, a tough life so um appreciate that man and i'll continue to put you guys on uh everybody i come across man everybody i come across try to help you guys out active income cool yeah man active income is dope i know a lot of people talking about passive income i'm cool with both Passive income, active income, as long as you keep your money coming in. Also, I'm not anti-job. Uh, Are you an electrician? No. Uh, my mentors, well, I, well, one of my mentors, two of my mentors, let me count, are um, electricians. I'm not an electrician, though, but um, I have several mentors, and um, they teach me a lot. I'm just a serial entrepreneur uh, who does multiple things to make legal money and shares the content with, with you guys. So um, that's all I am, man. Just Regular guy, do a, a couple of things to make money, share them with the people. If you want to do them, do them. If not, you know what I mean? Hopefully in the future, I, I'll put some out there that you want to try either part-time or full-time. Take home $1,000 a day, changing residential electrical panels. Many times it is more de- uh, depending. Um, shout out to you, man, Suburban Homestead Outfitter. And, um, and I apologize, Jason Nelson, if you wasn't even talking to me, because uh, you might have been talking to him since his comment is above you. But um, shout out to you, Suburban Homestead Outfitters. Make $1,000 a day, change your residential electrical panels. Many times it is more dependent. Um, if you ever want to be on the channel and you want to share that game, again, um, I always tell people to hit me up on other platforms other than YouTube because I get so much content, I mean, so much comments on YouTube, you can easily, like, you can easily get overlooked, and it's not intentional. It's like, I wake up in the morning to 200 comments, I start going through them, I'll go get something to eat and come back, and now I got 500 comments, and I still got to list stuff, and write books, and check on the courier business, and check on the fish, and you know what I mean, and make sure my daughter don't need nothing. So, um, if I ever omit your, your comment, it's, it's not intentional. It's just, you know, got a lot of stuff going on. But I try to get back to as many people as possible. Shout out all 59 people that's here. Uh, oh, yeah. And Suburban Homestead Outfitter said, yeah. 
Um, peace, brother. Peace, everybody. Appreciate you here. Hit that like button. Uh, hood morning from San Diego. Shout out San Diego. Uh, I'm at work now. Two hundred dollars for how long? I'm gonna run through it a little bit fast. I'm riding now. I'm a dump truck, Pensacola, Florida. Yeah, man, man. I want to go to Florida, man. I I gotta find time, man. That's that's gonna come with entrepreneurship too, man. Like it's gonna it's gonna be all good and you make your money different ways, but then once you want to go places, you like, man, how I'm gonna go places, man? I gotta. So um that, but you know what I mean. But uh, you can automate stuff. You know, I've automated stuff in the past, but you know, right now, I just gotta uh get this stuff up to a point where it can be automated. You should come to California to teach a class, man. Absolutely, man. I'm down to going anywhere, man. If, if anybody doesn't know that, um. The only issue that we're having with um, actually teaching the class everywhere, because we can go anywhere, but um, teaching the class, um, Mike feels more comfortable. He has almost 20 years of experience doing this full time, making great money with this and his other businesses. But uh, he really loves this, passionate about it. He doesn't just want to like do a presentation where it's like he just stands in front of a whiteboard or in front of a crowd and just tells you this is how. Uh, a washing machine, dryer, everything is designed and works. He actually wants to be at a place where he can hook up water lines, drain pumps, outlets, because uh, he, he's going to teach that information, but he wants everybody that comes to every class to be able to touch something. So it's not, when you leave this event, it's not, hey, I have just the book knowledge to know how this stuff works. It's like, man, I, I've done this before. I've taken apart you know what I mean? A motor, a transmission. Well, you don't take that apart, but I've taken apart a washer or a dryer. I know how to take the transmission out, the motor out, the capacitor out. I know this is how a washing machine works. So um, we do want to go everywhere, but right now we're just working on logistically. How can we give the same value that he's going to give you if you come to his shop where he has all the appliances and all the hookups in Atlanta, California, New Orleans, wherever, because we don't want to come to you and give you like a watered down version. We want to give you the same value and continue to give greater value the more we do this everywhere we go. So the, that's the only issue. Um, what's the high ticket item from yesterday's palette? Um, I think those drones, when we were looking them up, were like, we're going to package them together to be like a hundred bucks. We're doing a lot of packaging stuff together. So it wasn't really like maybe the highest individual item was only like 60, 60 bucks. But we're going to do a lot of packaging stuff because, again, it was all Walmart uh, shelf pools and returns. So I'm going to do a lot of like two for one deals where it's like uh, I got five universal rule remotes. I'll sell them to you for the price of three just to get them going. Uh, and I still turn a profit. And um, somebody gets a great value where it's like I really only needed two universal remotes or three universal remotes or one universal remote. But for this price, if this one breaks or something happens, you know, what I mean, I've spent a couple extra dollars and I got all of these. So that's how we doing just because the kind of stuff that we have is not very high end stuff, but um, it's good working stuff. So I'm going to just package it together, sell people bundle deals just to be like, you know, you get it in a lot together. You need it one or two, you got five. If you lose one, if you break one, no worries, you got a, a backup. Yo, JT, my G, what's Gucci, cuz? What's up, Adam? Welfare office kicking people out of New York and New Jersey. Why is the welfare office kicking people out of New York and New Jersey? Welfare office, uh, if you don't mind, look, hit me up on that. Why is the welfare office kicking people out of New York and New Jersey? That's messed up, man. Uh, if it's true, that's messed up. If anybody else is in New York or New Jersey, um, you know what I mean? And you, I'm not asking you, are you on welfare? You don't got to share that if you don't want to. But if you just have heard that, uh, put it put it in the chat. Seattle, Washington in the building. Shout out to you. Lexington Market still have great food. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I used to love going to Lexington Market, man, uh, to get food, man, while we was uh, down, once we leave the harbor. Um, what about Nashville? Yeah, yeah. It's no places off limits. Like, We'll go anywhere, anywhere, Um, but it's just logistics. Like, we don't want to come to California and just do, uh, you know, just a, a, a verbal presentation and get you excited and you feel like you could fix something. And then you like, I don't I don't know how to unbolt this from that. You know what I mean? So um, that's the only logistical problem we have. And um, we don't want to go somewhere 
where we can't give everybody that's there the opportunity to hands on do stuff. So, yeah, you understand how it works. Now you know how it feels to remove this, like and how to put this back together so that you're confident um, once you go through those third party companies, like Mike said, um, that, yeah, I know how this works in my mind. I also now how, know how to put hands on this, take it apart, put it back together. So I'm confident when I go get that contract, I can make this money. Like I, I can do the job. Do you have a P.O. box? Um would you do a product review? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I apologize for not mentioning that more in my old videos. I used to do it all the time. So all of my subscribers, it, um, my PO box is in the description of all of my vi uh, videos, but it is, um, PO box 72. Let me just type it in the chat. PO box 72 hammer, South Carolina, two, nine, five, four, seven, it's in the chat, but P.O. Box 72, Hammer, South Carolina, 29547. Uh, yeah, if you want to send a product for a product review, we can do it live. We do it pre-recorded. It, it don't matter to me. But, yeah, anybody that subscribes to my content and you want a product review or you want to promote anything or you want to send anything, like send me something cool. It'll be in the background on display here. Um, and we'll move some of this other junk out the way. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Yeah, I don't got no problem with people sending stuff if you want to send stuff. Um, after you got done sorting out your palette, how much good items and bad items did you come across by just looking at them? Um, we didn't actually keep count. The majority of stuff was good, but like, yeah, maybe um, I'll say a little less than a third of the stuff um, was bad because lots of times you can't just go by the ticket. Um, and I might have something that still has a ticket on it. but um. They came with like a, a return ticket on it, like a receipt, and it'll say that it's damaged. So um, we tested everything, uh, been up, you know what I mean, super late. I'm probably going to take a nap after this podcast that I'm going to do after this. But um, yeah, man, about a third of the stuff, though, to answer your questions, because, yeah, we wanted to sort everything, test everything, and um, everything is still not listed because, um, you know, got sleepy, but everything will we'll finish listing that stuff and um, go ahead and get it out of here. Um, and another thing too, if you guys don't know, or if you haven't seen the palette video yet, appreciate everybody that has, but if you are going to get into doing palettes, um, I would say that it's not the best place to start only because lots of places you can only see what's on the top of the palette. Um, because they don't want people to pick through the palette because if they let people pick through the palette, many places, um, then you would pick out all of the good stuff here, all of the good stuff there and make your own best palette and then leave a palette of junk or uh, low selling items in a box. And then the warehouse will be stuck with a ton of boxes that nobody wants because they like it's just a bunch of three, four, five, ten dollar items in here. Um, so most of the times what, what places will do now is they'll say you can see the top of the palette and then you got to buy it you know, not knowing what's at the bottom and like a, a box may be, um, I think this might be like, it's not that high, but, um, maybe the box is like as high as this show you guys. And these are just standard shells. So it'll be like, could be a, a few feet high, you know, um, and you can only probably see to this level. So if you can see this and this, but you won't know what this is in the box. So um take that in mind too. Take somebody with you that that has bought palettes before if you can. Um but there there's nothing wrong with it, but I want you guys to, you know, understand what you're getting into before you just go there and start throwing money because you see computers and drones and everything at the top. And then like how we did, once we got past the big stuff, we had a bunch of cell phone chargers and you know screens and all this other stuff stuff you can still sell of course we can bundle it together and sell it but it's not like big ticket items um but it it'll still make money what's up from detroit l boogie i want your courier book uh oh it's moving fast i want your courier book where can i get it do you cover insurance for the courier business the standard insurance is three hundred thousand dollars yeah yes uh let me answer your question first uh you can go to amazon.com type in jt hustles or you can type in the drive to freedom, the hustler's guide to becoming an independent courier. It will pop up. 
Uh, it's on Amazon right now. All of my books will be on Amazon probably for the foreseeable future. Um, just so it's easier for people to go find and uh, invest in if that's what you want to do. And you can search just by JT Hustles, spelled just like the YouTube channel name. But um, when it comes to insurance, the standard for independent couriers with like a cargo van, $300,000 um, policy, meaning that $300,000 full coverage. The example I like to give is you will see it as 300, 100 slash 50, something like that. So 300 slash 100 slash 50. And uh, what it means, I thought I had my whiteboard, but I'll just tell you, um, $300,000 is the total policy. So that is the most money that their, your insurance company will pay out. $100,000 is per person. So for example, if uh, you run into me, let's say it's me, my mom, and my daughter in the car, and you or your driver runs into us, then each of us can get up to $100,000 per person for our injuries, right? Um and then the $50,000 is like physical damage. Let's say you run into the back of us. Uh, I had laptops in the trunk. You broke all my laptops. And, you know, I want money back from my laptops. So um, that is like how you will see it written. Again, 300 slash 100 slash 50. Uh, it's a $300,000 insurance policy. And um, once you start dealing with bigger companies, they might say they want you a mil to have a million dollars insurance. But you'll probably see $300,000 uh minimum more than you'll see a a million most times uh <clears throat> you got a portfolio of your investments um like in a sense yeah but like uh not like a spreadsheet <laughs> not like a real nice organized spreadsheet but yeah like I keep track of it um question how do you start research on creating a business plan where where do you start your research? Um, I will say that uh, first identify why are you starting this business? You know what I mean? Like, um, so, uh, and I'm going to just break this down real quick to uh, give you the best value for, for taking the time to ask this question. How do you start the research and creating a business, right? Um, so I need an example of a business. So um, let's say a courier service, right? Um, and first of all, let's talk about a business plan. Um, in my four years of entrepreneurship was just not long comparable. Um, but my mentors have been in business since the eighties. So they have 30 plus years combined. They have over a hundred years cause they, you know what I mean? Not Mike, but, um, you know, my other mentors are kind of old, a little bit old. Um, sorry, um, if you see this video, um, but like those people that have been entrepreneurs for a long time, um, they'll tell you, and I've learned myself that um, you really only need a business plan in the traditional sense if you're going to the bank to get money. Now you can have a a plan a, a informal business plan is what I'm saying. Like you can have a plan for your business. Let's call it that. You can have a plan for your business, but um, as far as creating a formal business plan, like um. I would say unless you're going to the bank to get a loan, <clears throat> you don't really need a formal business plan. Uh, I have made one formal business plan and it got denied. And ever since then, I've just been starting uh, businesses with my own money. Um, but if you wanted to research, I would say um, it's kind of hard to do without having like an example. So uh, I would say identify your niche identify a problem within your niche. We'll just keep it general for the sake of this question. And then identify a niche, identify a problem within the niche. And then I would research that. Um, and then that's where I would start. But if you want to give me a little bit more context, uh, Miss Vicky J, I'll give you a better answer. But, um, but yeah, but I don't want to go too deep and it not make any sense. So um, if you want to give me a little bit more context, we'll go deeper. You're awesome. And I thank you for all your help. No problem. Dora Breeding. Let me see. <clears throat> Anyone that subscribes. <laughs> yeah, man, I appreciate that, man. <laughs> uh, anybody that subs to your channel in the next five minutes will get subbed back um, if you sub. Okay, we're we going to let you live on your promo, man. That's not, that's not necessarily the best marketing, though. 
I'm gonna just be real with you. Like I'm, I'm gonna let it be seen, like because it was hidden. But um, it looks like LM Blitz. Like if you're trying to get subscribers on YouTube, but and you didn't ask for this information, so I'll keep it short. But you you don't have a profile picture, and like people don't really sub just because you ask them to sub. This is what happens, like because people do this on Instagram too. They'll do like follow for follow. But then once you unfollow them, there's a good chance that some people will unfollow you. So if you're going to sub to people just to sub back, some people might do it. But then what kind of content are you creating? If you're not creating interesting content, then some people will just unsubscribe because they're not interested in what you're doing. So, again, like, you know, what I mean, I'm going to let it live. If you guys want to go subscribe to them, you go check them out. But a better way to get subscribers. And this is just somebody that's been doing it 16 months, still got a small channel comparably. But I would make content for whatever type of people that you want to subscribe to your channel. So if you make, I'm, I'm sure it's a reason why you want people to go to your YouTube channel. So if you make funny videos, just, you know, make the best funny videos, make the best business videos, make the best pet videos that you want to make. I would put a profile picture on my page. Um, I'm, I'm going to assume you don't have a banner image. Like I would just organize my YouTube page and create a ton of content. Um, and then subscribers will come. What did you purchase the palace at? Palmetto Palace. Palmetto Palace in Timmonsville, South Carolina. Um, if you don't want to go to Timmonsville, South Carolina, or if you can't go to Timmonsville, South Carolina, I will Google uh, liquidators in your area, wholesalers in your area. They have some online ones as well um, that you could purchase from. So you don't have to go where I went. Um, and I'm not co-signing them at all. Like, you know what I mean? They don't pay me money to say their name. And uh, this is uh, just me buying it for instructional purpose. So I'm not trying to tell you guys, oh, go to Palmetto Palace, you'll make six figures. You know what I mean? But um, I just wanted to share that experience with you. Now, do I know people come from out of state to there to buy stuff and resell their store? Absolutely. But um, that's just one example. That's just one example. Sub JT, what's up, King Joe 51? Olivia Dixon, I'm from San Diego also. Appreciate you for being here. Happy first day of spring. Appreciate that. Brent TV. How much around about does the insurance cost monthly? It depends on your driving record. Um, for me, with just two vans, because the trucks are like on commercial insurance. But for the vans, it's like less than $200 a month. But, you know, just like any kind of insurance, like they're going to look at your driving record. They're going to look at your driving record. Now, um, if you're talking about getting a commercial policy, it's going to cost significantly more. Um Appreciate you, sir. Where are the businesses? What are the businesses are you involved in and where are you located? People ask me that all the time. Like, man, like I do a lot. Like, I, I do this YouTube stuff. I do podcast stuff. I do courier stuff. I have several online businesses. So, but I'm counting eBay, Macari. I still not in the Amazon game yet. I'm going to get in the Amazon. I'm just dragging my feet. I got a private label business that's doing well. Write books. Um... Uh, I'm starting a fish breeding business. I'm looking on my board now. Like, I have to write this stuff down. Um, I'm working on an animation business, which is years away, but I am working on it now behind the scenes. Um, and, yeah, and everything else on this board is just going to be, like, stuff that I haven't even started yet. But I'm, I'm into a lot. But, um, but I'm again, like, this is what interests me, though. Like, I like um, having multiple streams of income. Um, I started off as just a courier. I did very well. I learned that routes come and go um, from no fault of your own sometimes. Um, so sometimes you get lucky, you get a great customer, they'll ride with you till the wheels fall off. Sometimes you'll get a contract with a huge company where you don't have any personal connection with the people that's in charge. So you can do excellent work. And then after a while, um, they'll just want to try somebody else because they got uh, a cheaper price or they'll do more or, you know, you never know. Or sometimes, you know, they just... Maybe that person does have a personal connection with somebody at the top that you don't know. So um, because of that, I said, well, I don't want to be solely dependent on the courier stuff. Now, I, I maintain several contracts with several different companies. So just because this company leaves me, then, you know, I'm still OK with these other companies. But um, I just like to have my hands in other stuff. So, you know, let's say um, I personally don't believe that. uh self-driving cars will eliminate the transportation industry, but some people do. So just for the sake of the argument, let's say that that does happen. Well, I still make money online 
with various businesses. So um I wouldn't I wouldn't be home. Um so yeah, man. But I do a lot, man. Um and I share with you guys just a bunch of stuff and really designed for you to pick and choose. If you don't like breeding fish, don't breed fish. If you don't like being a courier, don't be a courier. If you don't like selling stuff online, don't sell stuff online. Maybe you like fixing cell phones and want a contract with a with a company or companies so that every time a phone is broken, they pay you money to fix it. So that's the whole vibe you're gonna get here. Just different businesses. You pick and choose what you like. Uh JC, don't say old, say season. Yeah. All my entrepreneurs are seasoned. Sell Mike. Mike is young. But my other entrepreneurs are seasoned. Seasoned. So I got um uh my first uh my first mentor, man. Not entrepreneur, my first my mentor. So I got a mentor that has been in the trucking business over 30 years, has several trucks up in Maryland. Great guy. Love to talk to him all the time. Uh, also, my uncle, uh, my other uncle, which is also my mentor, has a general contracting business in Charleston, does everything, fixes a ton of houses. Um, I have a lady who's like a second mother to me. She's big in the child care industry, the daycare industry, um, and she's going to expand to multiple daycares. And um, she mentors me a lot on business as well. And, um, and you guys know Mike. So y'all seen Mike. Um, y'all actually probably seen most of my mentors, but I don't know if I identified them as this is my mentor. They they do all of this great business stuff. But um, I have videos of my other mentors on this channel as well. Um, I was thinking of starting a business plan and going into the business for health and wellness, especially in our community. So I was wondering, where do I start my research? Thank you from Wisconsin. Okay, so if I was going to start a, a health and wellness business um, in Wisconsin, where would I start my research? Um, I would like start looking for the data on, I guess, obesity, any health related problems. I wouldn't look at it for all of Wisconsin. Uh, I would start off because it would be more manageable if you just look for it in whatever area you're going to start your business. And I understand that you might say I'm going to do it online, so I'm going to start it everywhere. But I would still focus on whatever the major city is in Wisconsin. And I would identify the reason why health and wellness is important, which is obvious, but you know, I will still identify that. Um, and then I would create a solution for it with my business plan. And then if you're going to a bank, then, you know, they're going to want to see, uh, and I've, it's been years since I've done this, so it might've changed, but they're going to want to see exit strategies. They're going to, you're going to have to have some skin in the game too. So they might want you to have so much money as well and, uh, things of that nature. But um, in a nutshell, like what I would do if I was you was narrow it down to a very popular city or area in Wisconsin, um, identify why health and wellness is important. I will put that in my business plan. And then what the bank wants to see um, is like numbers. Like, yeah, your story is going to be great. And it's good to have a great story, especially if you want to go beyond the bank and like source money through like crowdfunding, like the video I did recently where it's like, Mike and his friends came together and now they invest in real estate where they give money to uh, real estate investors and they flip the property and then pay Mike and them back with interest. So um, it's great to have a good story. And once you go into your consumers, that's going to be part of your marketing strategy as well. But when you go into the banks, banks want to see numbers. They You can have the greatest sob story on earth, but um, you, you need to really focus on how can I make this bank feel confident that um that I'm going to pay them back the money. And that might mean um in in my case um they wanted to see what is the uh I forget the exact term for it, but how much money do you keep in that account with them at a regular basis? Do you keep a lot of money with them or do you got an account with like $30 in it and you know what I mean you don't never really maintain no balance with them? What does your credit look like? Things of that nature. Do you have any collateral? And again, I'm assuming that if you're saying a business plan you go into a bank. So this is the kind of stuff that when I went, that is what they wanted to know. They were more so with concerned with the numbers than the story, but a story was part of it as well, just to have a well-rounded business plan. So you give them the story and then you give them the black and white. This is my credit. This is, you know, the amount of money that I kept with y'all. I've been with business this well. Um, this is how much skin I'm putting in the game with my own money. This is, if you could pre-sell anything, that will help. Like this is, you know, my pre-sale numbers already is already making money on the pre-sale of, uh, I don't know if it's a product or service, but it don't matter. Whatever it is, you pre-selling. So um, 
that's how I would approach it. That's how I would approach it. The um the only reason that I got rejected at the time is was um the amount of money that I was asking for, and um and I didn't have credit at all. I didn't have personal credit or business credit. Um, because you know, again, uh, my mentors was like, you know, they was really big on man, cash is king over credit. So I saved money and I started my businesses with my own money. Um, and I ain't had no credit. So a young, what was I, 20, 24 year old dude coming in like, hey, I have this business. I'm trying to scale up this business. Um, I have all of this cash driving these, you know, vans and trucks. You should give me a hundred plus thousand dollars. Like I, I wasn't really good at, you know what I mean, at that part because they looked at my credit. Uh, I was young and dumb, so I didn't have a lot of money in the account. I was, you know, I ain't, ain't never had no bunch of money. So I, I had a lot of cash on me and not um didn't maintain a balance. So it was just little stuff I just didn't know. So just being young and dumb is what uh why I didn't get it. And then um I just never went back. I got letters and stuff once I, you know, built credit and um started keeping money in the bank like like smart people do, um, that you know don't want to get robbed. <laughs> but but yeah, man, I think you'll have success with, with trying that, man. Stay in touch with me, Ms. Vicky J. Moving on. I get subs off of my funny videos that I really put on. I never even wanted subs. So yeah, man, like content over anything. So I mean, and again, not trying to knock you, man. Um, if, if you somebody that just goes around and like, man, like for like, follow for follow, sub for sub. But um, if you're trying to build a platform for a reason, like a purpose, like content over everything. Like, yeah, market and say, hey, will you guys, you know, check me out? But um, what's going to really get you more people than anything is um is your content. Like, um, I made a post on Instagram, too, telling people that uh, people don't support you just because you ask them to. They support you because they see the value. That's, that's just facts. Um, so you could say, hey, will you guys please support me? Will you follow my Instagram page? And they might do it. But then if you're trying to sell them something or try to monetize that, like, I mean, if they don't see the value, you're not going to monetize that audience. Have you, ever, have you ever purchased a product from China and been successful at selling that product? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I was drop shipping. I still drop ship a little bit, um, but I just I just don't like the turnaround time that I've had with even the greatest drop shippers or the best drop shippers that I've dealt with. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I've, I've had success with that. Um, Alibaba, DH Gate. These are the websites that people don't want you to know about. But um, I operate business from like a, a perspective of abundance. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to give value to everybody, whether you watch my free YouTube videos, you buy my books, you come to my event, you buy my products from my eBay store. Like so um, I don't think that me helping people make more money is going to be like, oh, now that you know this website, I'm going to go poor and go homeless and my daughter's going to start. Like, nah, man, I'm, a, I'm a hustler, man. I'm a legitimate hustler. Legitimate hustler, man. I don't care what y'all do. I'm going to eat. Um, is a building a need and opening an appliance of whole street business if living in an apartment? Nah, nah. Early on, um, and I don't know if Mike shared this story, but um, I, I hope he don't mind. Early on, um, Mike didn't have a, a building. He was just um, like, he come to you. He come to you and he fix your appliance, fix your upholstery, you know what I mean? In and out. And he did that for years. Now, once he started getting big corporate contracts, um, then, you know, part of the, the verbiage was, you know, you had to have a facility because um, instead of him going to, uh, let's say, uh, Sears, since he named Sears, and I'm not going to call any names that he didn't call yet. Um, instead of going to Sears and um, fixing stuff, well, that's not even practical. But let's assume that you had to go into Sears and fix an appliance, right? Which that's not how it works at all. Usually you go into Sears or go in those stores and buy stuff. And then uh, your stuff, the one that you get comes from a warehouse. And it looks exactly like the display model. But um, when it comes to big contracts, instead of you going to places, they want to be able to send you several units and you just fix them all. And then you send them back and then they handle them that way. So the answer to your question is no. In the beginning, you don't have to have um, a big commercial building like Mike has now. Um, but if you want to scale up and get the biggest contracts you can, they might say, uh, well, we want to send you 25 washers and dryers. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you want to put that in your apartment. Um, 
do breeze fish too? Well, on a small scale, on a small scale. That's that's along the lines with like my my animation um business, which is like uh it's gonna be years in the making because um I got zebra plecos. People giving me feedback on that video, like, oh, they're not selling for that much no more. They're going down in value. Other people saying that they're going up in value. So it's kind of like a um, it's kind of like a gamble, uh, in a sense. But all business is a risk or a gamble, uh, you could say. So um, but yeah, man, like uh, how much did you drop for your initial zebra per pleco purchase? Nine hundred dollars. I spent nine hundred dollars for five, and um, I think I put the invoice in the video. It's like eight seventy something, but yeah, like nine hundred dollars. We got uh five, they one inch long zebra plecos, and um uh, and yeah, I'm a, I'm gonna grow them out. I'm gonna breed them. I'm gonna buy more. Uh, so I'm not just gonna just keep five. Um, but I'm gonna buy more. These are just the first five. Um, that I'm gonna get climatized, get used to their feeding patterns. You know, learn more about the breed, and then I'm gonna invest in a lot more. Um, until I can get, you know, several breeding pairs. Cause somebody made a good point. They may be right. I'll find out once I get to that point. They were saying that uh maybe my numbers aren't realistic, but um I said I want to have, you know, a, a a batch of fish that can produce at least um 50 eggs a month. So maybe I can't do that with five pairs. Maybe I gotta do that with 30 pairs. You know what I mean? Like it is what it is. Like, you know what I mean? My standard is still my standard though. So, um, you know, I appreciate that insight. If I got to do more, I'll do more on my. Don't forget your app, JT. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to make an app by the end of the year. Um, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm not, you know, really big on like if this is going to be a business. It's probably going to be more so of like I learned how to make an app and then I might make something for anybody that wants to make their own app. Because I and the reason why is because I kind of see how things are going. Um. Like in the future, I feel like it's going to be a point that how everybody that has a business has a website at a certain point. I think everybody that has a business will probably want an app as well. So um, I'm just getting ahead of the curve, you guys. Um, hello, I'm French. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate. I don't want to mess up your name, but I appreciate you here. Uh, I'm going to try it. Tan Tana, and I apologize if I mess up your message. I enjoy your info. Thank you for all the information. Hello. I emailed you, JT. Cool, cool. I'm going to check my email after my podcast. So I'm I'm going to end this. I'm going to do a podcast. I'm going to check my email. Uh, what business you believe will withstand the test of time or recession? Um, I really feel like this is, well, there's a lot of them, but I'm just going to name one. I really feel like this whole online teaching stuff, like if you're teaching people stuff. I feel like there's going to always be a market for people to learn anything. You know what I mean? And I, and I understand like you're in the cannabis industry. So, um, cannabis might be one of those as well. I just don't know enough about it, but, um, but what I'm saying is like, I feel like there's going to always be a market of people that's willing to learn, especially how I'm seeing how people gravitate to my content and the content of others. So whether you are teaching them how to make money, how to cook, how to be better uh, husbands, um, you know, and like you said, app development in the courier service too. Like I agree that too, but I feel like, um, and, and again, it's a bunch of them. I'm just naming one shout out engineering cannabis. Appreciate the super chat app development and courier services. Um, I agree with that too. But um, if I had to pick one off the top, I would say teaching people. Um, I feel like people going to always want to learn, even in a recession. If, and when money is tight, People are going to want to know, how can I get more out of my money? How can I make more money? When times are good, then people might want to spend more money on leisure stuff. They might have more disposable income. So if you're teaching people how to safely travel. So teaching, I think, is a uh, is recession proof. Now, not a traditional teacher, uh, because um, to my understanding, they don't make a lot of money. But if you uh, teach people stuff of value that can help them. I feel like you'll always have a space in in business. Did I hear y'all say you ordering fixed TV screens? Um, yeah, Mike Mike fix everything. Yeah, he can fix TV. He fix TVs, refrigerators, anything you could tear up, Mike can fix. But I appreciate everybody for being here. Being here, probably one of my longest live streams. If you want to be a part of the podcast, want to make that uh, abundantly clear, you can. Um, go to JT Hustle's Instagram page. JT Hustles is only following one account.
That is the Hustle Time Podcast account. I do it like that by design, so it's easy to find the podcast. I'm going to live stream it on the Hustle Time Podcast Instagram. And if you want to type in your thoughts or get added to the Instagram, uh, I would love to see you there. And um, But with the podcast, though, we're going to stay on topic. So you're welcome to come, but you got to talk about what we're talking about. See you over there in a little bit. Peace.